When did the popular kid's life fall apart in a few seconds? Back when I was in high school, we used to have this group of popular girls who have probably seen way too many teenager movies. For them school was a fashion show. They were always commenting on everybody looks and how they are dressing. Our school never had a policy for wearing uniforms like other schools, hence some students were turning it into fashion. They wanted to make a statement they are more superior than others, always standing out and getting in trouble. Nobody liked them very much, but we learned to just ignore their bullying remarks regarding our appearances or clothing or so on. It was winter time, so our high school was preparing the annual Christmas prom, everybody's favorite time of the year. This was a moment to be enjoyed with your closest classmates and friends, a moment to enjoy the holidays and time off from school, but then again for others, it was still a popularity contest. The group of so-called popular girls turned up in custom, made dresses for which their parents paid a fortune for. We were only 14 years old, but they looked like they were going to a wedding. They quickly remarked themselves by being loud and acting rude with everyone because they were saying they don't have enough room on the dancer floor. You see, every year we had this award thing. I can't even remember how it was called. It was just another thing to get the students hyped up about the prom. As it turns out, one of the girls in the back quote popular group won this contest in the last years. She was the so called princess. So, she did. She ended up winning the popularity contest somehow. Nobody cared too much about it anyway. However, people started paying attention when she went for her trophy and raised it above her head. In that moment she lost balance and she tripped as the heels that she was wearing broke. The tight dress didn't really help her either to regain balance. As a result she dropped the trophy. Everybody was silent for a second then started laughing. The girl on the stage started throwing tantrums blaming back quota stupid heels. I guess she just wanted to seem like a classy lady, but it requires more time to grow up that way. Her moment of glory was ruined. The other popular kids at the party pull out their phones and start recording the whole scene. They wanted to save this glorious moment. Couple of guys in shiny armor rush on the stage and help her stand up. The trophy was broken and the girl was barefoot because she couldn't walk on her heels. She was taken backstage and that was all that we had seen from her that night. After the Christmas holiday, we started seeing her again in school, but this time she was alone. Her friends didn't want to sit with her during lunch because that incident made her lose her popularity amongst the other girls of the popular group. The ironic thing is that from then on, nobody invited her to prom anymore, so she didn't turn up for the events in the upcoming years. Just like Hollywood fame, high school popularity doesn't last. When I got into my senior year in school everybody started having girlfriends and to date. However, by far the most popular couple in school was Jess and Michael who were the first one who were making out in public. They used to skip classes together and to bully younger kids just for fun. They always believed they were more mature than the other students because of their relationship. But that didn't mean much. However, after 3 months they start to get in a fight. Jess was accusing Michael that he cheated when he had been in camp with the school trip, but Michael obviously denied such accusations. I was attending the same trip as Michael and I knew what happened. I knew what happened because he bragged about how he kissed Gemma and how Jess will never find out. All the boys were laughing. Jess must have heard the story somehow, and she knew what Michael was capable of. Thus, the most popular couple in school broke up. Everybody was wondering why and people liked gossiping, because they didn't have anything else more interesting to do. Michael noticed how the breakup affected his reputation, so he wanted to fix things, because he felt he is being mocked by his friends and other classmates. The end of the school year was approaching, and Michael and Jess were still separated. Jess seemed like she moved on, but Michael was still contemplating on ways to get her days, so that she would win back his reputation, I guess, in a way for him, it wasn't only about Jess. At the graduating party, Michael made a bouquet from flowers, stolen from his mother's garden. He thought to himself, that it's time to show Jess his sensitive side again, so they can start over. However, he was nervous. He thought about rejection. What would happen if she would say back quote no in front of everyone? What if everybody will laugh? They shouldn't laugh, he thought. I'm a popular student, he said to himself. 
Jess will return back into my arms and everybody will applaud. Regardless of his motivational speech, he needed more to go through with the plan. So, he called most of the boys before the party to drink. In addition to the flower taken from his mom, he also grabbed a fine bottle of red wine from his parents cupboard on his way out. Michael started to unravel a story halfway through the bottle. Nobody told him to back down, because he seemed really determined to see it through, and get back Jess, but Jess was over it. We finished the bottle and we went inside. Afterwards, they have served dinner, so we had some in a hurry, being more hungry from the alcohol. Moments they dimmed the lights, and played some slow music. Michael knew this is his cue. He searched for his bouquet, and approached Jess on the dancer floor. His steps were wobbly from the wine and his stare was unfocused. He made the first steps, and handed Jess the bouquet, while he was barely able to stand on his feet. Jess didn't want to accept the bouquet, telling Michael that he smells like alcohol, and that he should leave. I could see Michael panicking, and breathing more heavily. His face turned red, and he grabbed his stomach like somebody kicked. He got sick, and puked all over Jess' dress and the flowers. Everything was covered in red wine. Jess was absolutely shocked and started screaming. One of Michael's friends grabbed him to take him outside for some fresh air. Needless to say, they never got back together. However, I think Michael got what he was after. At the end of the day, he only wanted to be popular. He sure is popular now, but maybe not quite the way he imagined it. Like any other school Lars had a bully as well. It was this one ape tough guy that claimed that he took to bodyguards one night at a party. He quickly became popular after that story. For some reason, he was also really popular with the girls too. I guess he knew how to lie really well. Everybody in school kind of respected him. He used to talk a lot and not do much, but it worked out for him. He also had this arrogant approach, especially with newer students. That fall it was the birthday party of one of our classmates and we were invited to this venue. Everyone from class was invited, and we really had a good time. We stayed until late, and when it was time to go, we decided that all the boys are going to walk together back home instead of taking the taxi. We grabbed our coats, said goodbye to everyone, and we went on our way. It was after midnight and we were a bit dizzy and talking big. Our classmates started shouting that no one is better than him or something crazy like that. Some of us told him not to yell so loud, but then he retaliated and yelled even louder. He was just trying to prove a weird point, that he's more alpha than the others, so it would make him feel appreciated and popular. We let him do this thing. We were walking for half an hour now, dark alleyways, blocks, shadows, no one around. The city was dead. You could hear the echo of our screams, and it felt like a good night. Moments later, going through a dark alley, we encounter 5 men with hoodies on. The space to pass through was narrow, and they were blocking the access. We stopped and stared at them. There were seven of us. There were five. Good odds I was thinking. Plus, we have our school hero. Let's see what he can do. The five guys approached us and told us something like that was too late to be walking around. They stepped forward. Our classmates stepped back. I could see our back quote tough colleague looking back at us. I was ready there and then. The guys took another step forward and said, what happened? Lost your voices? They were close to us now, and they were bigger than us. Our classmate who allegedly dealt with two bodyguards at a party, was now back away, and made a run for it. Swear to god, he was ripping the ground from running so fast. We couldn't believe it. Not so hard after all. He was just talk, it became clear. The other guys stopped for a moment, and looked at each other. They started laughing uncontrollably. We were looking at each other wondering what is going on. They let us go through. They said they didn't have any intentions to mess with us in the first place. We went on and then still thought about our classmate that fled away at the first sign of something serious. This will definitely ruin his reputation. Next day he didn't turn up for school, neither the day after that. Everybody started talking and now everybody knew. Maybe he thought people will forget, or just not talk about it. When he finally returned the next week, everybody started making subtle jokes and references to what happened. He got trolled by everyone, and lost most of his friends, that he used to hang out with. Guess he wasn't so cool anymore. After we've graduated, I heard from a former colleague, that the guy started learning martial arts, and attending different classes. I found it funny, 
but at the same time admirable. Nevertheless, what happened, happened and reputation cannot be unbroken. Our school wasn't a fancy one and people in our city were not so rich. So, every time someone with a bit more money than others came around, he or she will really draw the attention. So it happened, when we got a new classmate, that joined us at the beginning of this school year. From the first day he came dressed in flashy designer clothing, clearly wanting to impress. The guy had some Ray-Bans one and the newest iPhone. The whole package screaming back quote I got money. This way, he really made everyone else interested, and it didn't take much until the guy became quite popular in our school, because he really stood out from the others. He wasn't the nicest guy around however. He made fun of people who were packing lunch telling them they are too poor to afford buying real fun. I bet all the hard working mothers would have felt a bit insulted by that remark. He would also make fun of our clothing, because we were wearing some fancy brand. Despite all this nobody really confronted him, because even though he insulted most people in school, those people still wanted to hang out with him, because back quote he seemed so cool. All of them were blinded by the glitter. I could see through his lack of substance however. We were sitting in lunch one time, and he kept on making his lousy jokes. So, I've thought I'm going to just go with it, and I have continued asking him, Bro, how come you have all this money and all this cool stuff? I asked while acting surprised, I couldn't care less about his guxy shirt. How can we be rich like you? I was sort of expecting him to say that his parents are rich, which was the most obvious thing to say, but I wanted to emphasize to him that he wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for his parents, so he should be more humble. However, he seemed quite hesitant to give a straight answer and his attitude changed. He told me that I'm too curious and that I will get hurt. His impulsive reaction surprised me. The others around felt intimidated, so nobody asked those type of questions again. As time went on, he became more and more popular, getting invited to all the parties, and getting most gorgeous dates in our school. Everybody knew him now, and for some weird reason people showed him respect, even though he was acting like an uneducated teenager. One day when we finished our classes and everybody was walking out of school, there was a cop car standing at the entrance. I saw the back quote rich kid being taken by the police that day and everyone around noticed it as well, so they started gossiping about what could have happened. For the following two days he doesn't shop up to school. Things are becoming quite interesting now. On the third day the teacher told us what happened. She told us how this kid was suspected of selling drugs to youths. The police didn't have much evidence on him, but he will be put under surveillance and still be granted access to education, until his trial is coming up next month. Everybody was in shock. Myself not so much. I sensed it was something off from the start. The following week he returned to school, but this time not wearing the usual flashy style. Most of the students that used to hang out with him were avoiding him now, because they were afraid to get into trouble. Other ones were simply disgusted with the way he played us and light. There were no more parties now, and no more dates. Also, I heard that his parents, who turned out that they are not that rich after all, remortgaged their house to pay for their son's lawyer. That money was apparently put to good use, because it kept him out of juvenile detention center. Technically now it was proven that he was not guilty, if you ask me, innocence cannot be defined by a lack of evidence, but I'm not the one with the law degree. In spite his back quote innocence and the verdict, he couldn't redeem his reputation. In a way, I guess he maintained his popularity. Just not in a good way, now he was just a popular hypocrite marked by hubris.